Hi friends, today is gonna be my wrap up for the month of July. It is wrap up time! It's time for a wrap up. If you didn't know, a wrap up is where we sit here and I talk to you about all the books that I read in July. I read nine books, I do believe, maybe 10, maybe 11. I don't even know. Let me put it to you this way. It is July 31st, so it's like the last day of July. And I know I've read a lot and I've DNF some things and like I don't have everything in my planner. I'm kind of a hot mess right now, but I'm planning VEDA and you're seeing this on the first day of VEDA. So know that I am currently a little bit stressed, but just a little bit. Uh, so we're just gonna go over these books. I'm gonna do them in chronological order this time and see if that fails me as much as it usually does. Um, moving on! All of my Goodreads reviews will be linked in the description box down below if you want to know any of my full thoughts about any of these books because I typically get a little more spoilery there than I do here. First we have A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This is the first book in the Darker Shade of Magic, Shades of Magic, Shades of Magic trilogy. This was a reread for me. I don't remember what I rated it the first time and I'm not gonna look it up because I liked it better this time than I did last time. So basically this series is set in an alternate world where there are alternate Londons. White London, Grey London, Red London, Black London. Got it. And there's this guy and his name's Kel and he can travel between the Londons but no one else can. Uh, like okay there's a couple of other people that can but like not very many people can travel through the Londons. Okay so Kel is like raised by the royal family. He's kind of treated like their son but also kind of not. His job is to travel between the Londons to give messages to other kingdoms. So Grey London is like our world currently except like 400-ish years ago. And then Red London is where Kel's from and it's got all kinds of magic. And White London is basically sucked dry of magic. And Black London, everyone there is dead. This is the whole, this is all dead. Uh, there was like an outbreak and a thing happened and it just sucked all the life out of everybody. And that's why White London has very little magic because it's kind of like slithering next to it. It's just taking all of the magic uh, kind of sort of thing. We have Kel, we have Lila who is like a pirate without a ship. I hated Lila the first time I read this book and I really enjoyed her now so I think that's why I like this book better this time around. I knew that I should love this book and I think I had just read it at a bad time in my life and so I didn't love it as much as I should and I wanted to give it a valid shot. I loved this book this time around. I think the magic system is really well done. I think that the beginning of the book does drag a little especially when you're learning about all the different Londons but you have to take into consideration that Schwab is not giving us world building for one world. She's giving us world building for three. A little bit of the fourth. You would get a little bit of the world building for Black London, but not a lot. But you're getting world building for three and a half-ish different worlds, which is not something that you typically get in the first book of a series. So I'm willing to be a little lenient on that fact. I really enjoyed this. If you haven't already read these Schwab books, you probably never will. But if for some reason you trust me over the 87 million other people who have been reading this series, read it. It's wonderful. I then read The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth, which was just fantastic. I give this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I read this for Beautifully Bookish Bethany's Patreon book club. It was fantastic. I think for the most part we all enjoyed it. I think everybody rated it like a 3 or higher. It just... So it's like a domestic thriller. You have these two sisters, Fern and Rose. Fern is an oddball. She has a like condition where she has issue, a sensory issue, where she has issues with like sound and lights and smells and different textures, things like that. And her sister Rose is like very helpful and tries to help her figure out all, you know, manage her life, navigate it. Fern is very set in her structure. She keeps things the way they should be and neatly put together because if she gets outside of her schedule things go awry, people die. So she likes to keep things the way she likes to keep things. She works at a library. She's not really close with anybody at the library but she does have some friends there. And one day while at the library she meets Wally. 
I don't remember what Wally's real name is, but he looks like Wally. Which if you're not from Australia, which is where this book takes place, we're talking about Where's Waldo here. Um, he has multiple names in multiple different countries, but for my US viewers, it's Where's Waldo. In Australia, it's Where's Wally and so forth and so on. They discuss some of the other versions in the book. He looks like Wally, so she calls him Wally. And they kind of start this romance. He too has some issues. I would say they both are a little bit on the autism spectrum, just with the, their issues with like meeting people, making first impressions, that kind of thing. Not a doctor, not trying to do it, diagnose people, but that's what it reads like to me and to some of the other people who I know who have read this book. Okay, so they're friends. She likes him. Her sister is kind of going through a rough patch in her marriage. Fern decides that something that she could do to help her sister out would be to get pregnant for her sister because her sister and her husband are trying to have a baby to reconcile their marriage. And so Fern's like, I can have a baby. So what if I get pregnant and have a baby for my sister? Y'all, shit goes downhill real quick from there, if you can imagine. So I loved this book. I loved the twists, the turns, just the layers and the depths to which our villain went to in this book. Just, I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting, I was expecting something. Like I knew, I knew there was going to be a twist. I knew that it was going to revolve around the person that it revolved around, but I did not expect it to be as deep as it went. It was like just so... If you like adult mystery stories, or I wouldn't really call it a thriller. It's a domestic thriller, but not really a thriller. It's kind of like a slice of life. It just if you like adult stories and you like plot twists and you like people that are not normal, read it. I then read Slingshot by Mercedes Heldwin, which was an arc. I gave this three out of five stars. It was okay. I don't honestly really even remember what it was about. So this story follows a girl who goes to a private school and a boy that she meets there and he's getting beat up by like these mean older kids and she takes a slingshot out of her bag and she like saves him by hitting the other guy in the eyeball with the slingshot with whatever is in the slingshot. You know what I'm saying? The uh, the projectile. That's the word we're going with. Anyway, she hits him in the eye with the projectile and she saves the other guy. And so then they become friends. She doesn't want to be his friend because she's an absolute bitch, but he like thinks he can warm her heart. And so they become friends and they learn to have these things in common and they're like trying to help each other deal with all the things that they have to deal with. And then some shit goes down and there's some drama and then there's some real drama. And then like, it's just, it was okay. It wasn't my favorite. It was all right. I think if I was a teenager, which is the targeted audience for this book, I would enjoy it more. Um, my nieces would probably enjoy it, but they would not be happy with the ending at all. And I was very not satisfied with the ending. I would say up to about 80 to 90 ish percent of this book, I 100% would have gave this at least a four and a half. But the last 20% just kind of ruined it for me. Um, I'm not happy with how it ended at all. It just didn't work for me. So. I then read The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I loved it! This is the fourth and possibly final book in the Truly Devious series. I say that because we were told that it was a trilogy and the third book was going to be the final book, but now we've got a fourth book. This one wraps everything up nice and neat and pretty at the end, so I don't know that there's going to be another book after this, but this plot line, y'all. So this book follows our characters from the Truly Devious series. You do not need to have read that series, I don't think, to read this book. I think this one does kind of stand on its own. But if you're anything like me who wants to read things in sequential order, I highly recommend you do. My thing is like, if I read this and I really like it, I already know kind of like where our friendships end up, where our couples end up at. So going back from the beginning to read it again isn't as good as it would have been having just read from the beginning. So I highly recommend if you want to read the series, start it truly devious, work your way through, get to book number four. So this book takes place at a different location. It's a different school where there was this box kind of like um, 
like a crate. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like a Connex trailer, crate, train thing. Anyway, um, in the woods and these four students are murdered in like the 70s. I don't think it was quite that long ago. Um, but four students were murdered at this box in the woods and they have never figured out what happened to them. They bring in Stevie and her cohorts from the other part of the series to this school. It's like a camp. It's a camp. It's a summer camp, not a school. What am I doing? Uh, they bring them to this, su to this summer camp to try to figure out what happened and to solve the mystery. Okay. For like, our, oh my god, how many times have I said like in the last five minutes? Anyway, I'm moving on, Steve. The character development for our characters that we had from the first three books does continue on in this. I do think that there are some things that happened, especially between our main core group of three friends, that is interesting to kind of see. We get more of Stevie with her boyfriend, and we get, it's not as prominent in this book as it was in the first three. Their relationships between our main characters are not as prominent. But I think it's because they had to introduce such a wide cast of characters because you not only have these four teens that died in the woods but you also have anybody who was connected, interconnected into their lives like the their parents, their friends, their siblings, um, people that were at the camp at the same time, other counselors. Like you have so many people that you have to fit into this and then those people start dying, shit starts happening again, and Stevie's got to figure out what's going on because not only is it the murder that's in the past, but it's the murder that's happening now as well. The plot twist in this? Not what I was expecting. I'm also not sure how linearly it works out because I don't think that the time matches up as far as like, I can't tell you without telling you. So I have some questions about that. But otherwise, I really enjoyed this book. So do I recommend that you read this if you read the other three books? I do. Do I recommend this if you haven't read the other three books? I do, but I recommend you go back and read the other three books and then get to this one. I then read Medusa by Rosie Hewlett. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. We have talked on this channel at length about how much I fucking love Medusa. She is the original feminist. She is a fucking Gorgon queen. This bitch had life handed to her fucked up from the beginning. This takes the Medusa story that we all know from Greek mythology, or maybe you don't know it. I don't know. I don't know your life. This takes the Greek mythology story that I know and makes it into the feminist story that it always should have been. And it really highlights how unfair society is to women who are sexually assaulted, to say it politely. Is there a polite way to say it? Medusa, if you don't know, in the original Greek mythology was a temple maiden for Athena. Temple maidens are virgins because Athena was a virgin. Because Medusa was so attractive, she attracted the eyes of Poseidon, who also happens to hate Athena. He's kind of pissed off that Athens named themselves after Athena when he like gave them all of these nice things and because he's a dick and a dude and he can't handle the fact that Athena is being more powerful than him, he decides that he's going to go to Athena's temple and rape her priestess. What does Athena do when she finds out that Poseidon has raped her maiden priestess? She turns her into a Gorgon. What does she do to Poseidon? Absolutely fucking nothing. Because it's Medusa's fault. Because she was so attractive that she enticed him in. And if she had made herself less attractive and less vulnerable, then a literal god would not have done this to her. Like, Athena, do you even know how you were born, ma'am? Do you know? I have so many issues with this original story. But it is exactly what happens to women today. It is the exact same thing. It's somehow always the woman's fault. No matter what the man has done, no matter what the woman did to try to protect herself, it is always her fault. And that is why I am on the train of Medusa's The Original Feminist. So this book is from Medusa's point of view, but it's from Medusa's point of view of her in Tartarus. The Elysian Fields? 
I don't know what the exact... Where is she? I don't know. Anyway, she's in Hades. Okay. And she is telling us from like today's modern standards. So she's a spirit. Cool. And she's in the afterlife. And she's telling us the recounting of her story, what happened to her. But she's also inlaying bits and pieces of what she has learned over the years since she has died and also what the world has done to other women like her in that same time period. So this book takes, it's very short, very short. It is 199 pages, so super short. But in this book, it shows you not only how quickly people will love you because you're attractive but also how quickly people throw you away when you're attractive and you don't do exactly what they want you to do. It shows how a family can toss you out and yet still bring you in and it also shows the importance of friendships that can happen in the most opportune time. The most important friendship that Medusa had in her life was at the end of her life and because of that friendship with a person who shall remain nameless unless you read this book she was able to do something that she would not have been able to do if someone else had come to do what he had come to do that's very vague but my point is it worked for her i really really loved this book i cried made me very happy medusa also means protector and I think this book does a good job of explaining how Medusa was a protector and that's kind of the byline is uh, Gorgon killer monster victim survivor protector so you get to see both sides of Medusa in this and uh, I highly recommend this book if you haven't read it you should pick it up um, again very short very beautiful just loved it a Song of Wraiths and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown. I gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. I don't like this book. This book follows Malik and Karina who are, Karina's a princess trying to resurrect her mother who needs the heart of a king. And Malik is like this lowly kind of almost slave person who is trying to win back his kidnapped sister and in order to do that he has to kill the princess who happens to be Karina who needs a king. Karina puts on this like champion warrior thing and whoever wins gets to marry her which she needs to get a king so she can get a heart so she can resurrect her mom. So it's ideally we have Karina trying to kill Malik and Malik trying to kill Karina if you get what I'm saying. It's not that hard to figure out. Okay so we got that going for us. Malik is boy's got some anxiety and some panic attacks and is about as worthless as a shoe shop in the shire if you get what i'm saying the consensus is i read this for the avengers initiative reading challenge this month this was our group book the consensus is that if his older sister layla had been the one that had to kill the princess this book would have been over in about 20 minutes because that bitch would have went there killed her came back and been like what now and there's another character, a side character named Toon Day, who is fucking impeccable. I love Toon Day. He is just like this roguish, friendly, comedic, like he has the perfect character. Love Toon Day. Um, Karina is kind of like, she's all right. She's not my favorite, but she's all right. This book is ruined for me by the love plot. I don't know why I am like so hyper tonight. Anyway, it's ruined for me by the love plot. Like you go into it knowing that from the blurb, Karina has to kill Malik, Malik has to kill Karina, but uh oh, they fall in love. They've met each other twice, but they're in love and they can't kill each other. Like, I just, there's so much suspension of belief in that one aspect of this book that I couldn't even really pay attention to the rest of it. I did really enjoy the world building. I probably will not pick up the second part of this duology, but I love Rosie, so I will pick up more from her in the future. But this just was not the book for me. So I don't want to trash it, so I'm just going to move on. If you want to know more of my full thoughts, again, 
down below in the description box you'll find a link to Goodreads for this. Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. I give this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Nobody is surprised. I love this book. I love this series. If you don't know, the series follows Safi, Azul, Merrick, and Adwan, who are these four characters. They all have magic. They all live in this world where there are multiple kingdoms, multiple magics, and all of the kingdoms are kind of at war. They're not really at war. They're at like a 20-year truce, but they're also kind of at war. And there's like ocean battles and sea battles, which is an ocean battle, and battles in towers and battles on grounds, and there's things that blow up, and there's just like a lot of political drama because Merrick is a prince, and Safi's a domna and Isolde's a loser and Aedwan's a blood witch which means nobody likes him and there's all kinds of things that are happening. I also don't believe that Isolde is a loser but Isolde believes that Isolde is a loser and so does everybody else in town but it's fine. So this series follows those four characters and a giant cast of characters. If you are interested in trying adult fantasy but you think it's just a little overwhelming I recommend you try out the Truth Witch series the Witch 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 Land series because Suze writes her readability I would say is YA and it's less gruesomely descriptive if you will but her characters her world building her characters all of the work put into it is very reminiscent to like an adult high fantasy story love these books love everything about them if you haven't been on this channel then you don't know that but if you've been here you know this is one of my favorite series of all times cannot say enough things about this series other than this book was glorious it was fantastic it was everything I wanted except for a couple of things uh the relationships the love part was not really here this time around this was all like like who is the rook king that reveal about threw me for a motherfucking loop I can't I was not ready for that I was not ready for who the rook king was and the fact that he knows who he is girl girl I was not ready so like this whole book was like a whole thing for me and I fucking loved it and I want to know when the next book's coming out like I know it's going to be a minute and I ideally like can wait but also I don't think that I can wait but also <sighs> this book y'all this book y'all okay read it don't read it I don't care but you should read it. I then read Bewitched by Paige McKenzie and Nancy Olin. I give this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This book follows four teenagers who are witches. They are part of, technically three of them are part of this coven and there's another coven at their school that has three witches in it and this new girl moves to the school and the covens are kind of like fighting over her trying to get her to like join their covens because there's some shit going down in the world. In their world it is illegal to be a witch. You can be prosecuted and they've newly elected a president of the United States who is a douchebag and thinks that all witches should be like basically put into cages and burned at the stake because why not? These covens have to learn to come together because there is a threat at their school and so they have to learn how to work their dynamics whereas one coven is kind of like the dark side of magic and the other coven is the light side of magic and they have to learn how to work together to save everybody from the crazy people. So this book I really loved up until about the last five percent I think up until like the last five percent I was absolutely sold on this book but the end eh, something happened and I don't like the backwards progression that we took at the end of this book. Now will I continue to read this series? Absolutely because I do like the characters and I like the way that things have kind of come together. It's an interesting world building there's some things going on I know who the villain is. I called the villain way early in the book but also this is a book written for teens and I would say it reads more lower YA to mid grade over like upper YA um, but like I know that I have my nieces who are in that age bracket would absolutely love this book series and I am or at least this book anyway and I enjoyed it so I do plan to read more. And the last book that I read this month was Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass. I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. The second book in the Throne of Glass series. Not gonna tell you what it's about because you probably already know if you're on booktube. And for me honestly I really liked this book more than I expected to. I know that people have said once you get around book three-ish like the whole universe kind of changes and the whole series becomes a completely different entity than what it was prior to and I can see from the end of this book how that's going to take place. But I mean we went through a phase where everybody was like Throne of Glass it's fucking awesome and then we went through this phase where Throne of Glass is fucking trash. And honestly y'all I'm only on book two but I'm having a good time like it's not the best thing I've ever read but it's also not anywhere near the worst like it's above middle of the road. 
I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a good time. I think the issue for me is the pacing. And because I know that this, from what I recall, this series started out as like a by the chapter, um, posted to the internet type story, that makes sense to me, because you're going to have a difference of pacing in that sort of a story versus an actual published novel. So the pacing issue really is what lowered the points for this one for me. Um, probably would have been closer to a four star if it wasn't for the pacing. But there was just like so much that kept happening. And there were so many parts that I was like, so surely this is the end. And I would look down at my phone and it would be like 60%. I'm like, how is there another 40% of this book left? I don't even understand. So just the pacing was a little weird. But overall, I really enjoyed it. And I do plan to continue reading it. I do own them all. So I might as well just keep reading them, which is not true. Because if I dislike them. I will DNF them and move on with my life. Speaking of DNFs, I had two DNFs this month, so let's talk about those. The first being Lifeblood by Gina Showalter. This is the second book in the Everlife novels. Is that, that is accurate? So um, I read the first book of this series a really long time ago. I'm gonna talk about these really fast because my battery light is blinking at me. I read the first book of the series in like 2015 or 2016 and I knew from the way that it ended that this book was going to follow a trope that I absolutely hate which is putting lovers on the opposite side of a war and I hate it. And so I read, I've been putting it off for years, I finally sat down and read the first 20% of this and was like mm, nope I'm out. So bouncing on that. Um, I've been putting it off for a really long time. Just glad to have it off my TBR at this point. Also, The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I only made it to about page 80 of this one, but the main character is like 16 or 17 and she has fallen in love with a guy in his late 20s and she's trying to convince him to have sex with her. It's like page 78, 79, I don't know, somewhere around in there. She's trying to convince this guy to have sex with her and he's like, yeah, but you're just like a kid and I'm not cool with that. And she's like, but but I love you. And he's like, we just met three weeks ago. But I love you, though. I'm like, we should have sex. And he's like, I don't think so. And I'm gonna be honest here. I'm too old for this bullshit. I bounced. So at like 80 pages in, I bounced. I really like this movie. I don't know if we didn't discuss how old they are in the movie or if I just ignored that part when I was in my 20s. But as a 34 year old woman, I ain't here for this shit. Okay, those are all the books that I read in the month of July. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these, if you liked them, if you disliked them, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, or concerns. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! I win! Oh, my heart is so hurt.